This video is produced by the Cinema Cartography and sponsored by MUBI. MUBI is an online cinema, streaming exceptional films from around the globe. For your extended free trial, go to MUBI.com slash Cinema Cartography. Now about tonight's show, our story is entitled... Oh, but the title's unimportant. Tonight's story concerns, well, well, small matter. I'm sure you'll... I'm sure you will enjoy our story, but first... But first, well, if you've been watching this program, I'm certain you always know when we have a but first. And now you're going to create something. I don't care what anybody says. There is no better storyteller in cinema than Hitchcock. Well, if you mean as in like, the literal act of exposing a narrative, then I think I'd have to agree with you. Yeah, of course he is. I mean, the man knew how to pick a script. And yes, he works with form, he works with technique, but it's all about structure. Like, think about how often he played with archetypes, imposing motherly figures, mistaken identities. It's classic cinema in the service of something else. You see, I agree with you. But if I were to say what would define what made Hitchcock as being Hitchcock, it'd have to be his technique. Think of the most famous scenes across Hitchcock's filmography. Some obvious ones spring to mind. Yet it wouldn't necessarily be because of the content of the scene, but how it was done. There's the shower scene in Psycho, remembered not for the murder, but that the editing never showed the knife going in. You think of the film Vertigo and odds are, the first thing you think of is what's essentially now just called a Hitchcock shot. But that's what I'm saying. That's why he was the quintessential storyteller. Let's be real for a second. How often have we sat down and watched something only to have thought that this is someone practically playing with a camera? A lot. Because what is in the forefront of their cinematic vision is just to make things look pretty. And that's the difference with Hitchcock. A static is not necessarily groundbreaking in itself. If anything, it's supplementary to everything else. But Hitchcock holds an aesthetic sensibility that just disrupts the script. And that's what brings it to life. Right, I know what you mean. I always thought that with Hitchcock, all of his films were made exactly how they were supposed to be. And I don't even mean that in the sense that they were exactly what the filmmaker wanted to make. I mean that for those decisions that were made to propel the narrative, he used literally the perfect storytelling methods. Exactly. There's not a single choice in his work that feels arbitrary or innocent. Yeah, they were all perfectly thought out to convey the strongest single emotion he could capture at that time. There's a scene in Blackmail, where the character's worried about being charged with murder. So look what he does. He makes it so that the only part of the conversation yeah. we hear is the word knife. I mean, in Chelsea, you mustn't use a knife! Again, you've got the vertigo shot to show mental degradation. And um, what's the name of that one with the dinner scene where he looks directly at her at the table? Um, the one where he's talking about smelling of money. Shadow of a doll? Shadow of a doll, that's the one. Yeah. He sat at the dinner table and the first moment in the film that she realizes, oh wait, we let a monster into the home. It's a point of view shot, and he looks right at the camera. Yeah. Are they? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Hitchcock basically made a living of playing with the audience more than any other filmmaker. Definitely. I mean, just look at the way he promoted Psycho. No one, but no one, will be admitted to the theater after the start of each performance of Psycho. This, of course, is to help you enjoy Psycho more. We really have only your enjoyment in... And there was always this emphasis on the idea of space. Like he was aware of the proximity of the image and brought the audience in closer and closer until we fell dangerously close. Remember that scene in Psycho where Norman Bates is talking to the detective? We're so uncomfortably near. And do you remember how Vertigo starts? Saw so bus. No, I mean the close-ups dissecting her face. All right, yeah. It's Hitchcock telling us to look closer and we're intimidated that he would even have the courage to do so. I know. Also, I still can't believe Saul Bass did the Quaker Oats logo. I know, isn't that crazy? Nothing is better for thee than me. But yeah, Hitchcock did have this way of playing with the audience. In a Hitchcock film, the viewer is always acted upon. Just think of how many other shots there are of people looking right at the camera. Well, there's the one in Rear Window. And there's the one in The Birds too, where all the women are looking at her which is an amazing metaphor in itself. 
all the women in the town blaming this new female entity. But again, it's Hitchcock playing with archetypes. But what I was going to say was that I think more so than any other director, Hitchcock feels more than an auteur. Whenever the camera moves or we focus in on a body part or a gun, it's never just the manner in which the film is constructed. It really feels like Hitchcock is walking around and we're seeing things as he sees them. Like the camera is just an extension of him. Well, he is walking around. He literally puts himself in his world God knows how many times. But let's face it, he basically invented what auteur means. It's true. And I think that's why you can see a clear evolution in his films, but they still remain Hitchcockian. The 39 Steps and Frenzy are basically polar opposites, but you can still tell they're Hitchcock films because the respect of his technique as an artistic catalyst always stood. The fact that his philosophy of cinematic grammar coming first remained meant that he could discover new objective methods to tell a story. And it seems that he always challenged himself in this regard too. It's clear to me that he wouldn't move on to another filmic technique until he perfected the one he was already working on. He starts to make colour films for a decade, and then as soon as he creates a film whose palette is intrinsic to the story, he goes back to making black and white films. Because he knew. He knew exactly what he was doing the whole time. He was so lucid about his process and was able to fuse the aesthetic choices with the story. That's why he is the purest filmmaker. I've always thought of his methods as something unfolding, like a story, as something that you unfold. There's this active motion of discovery. I mean, think how many times, just in North by Northwest, the narrative evolves. You can take his work just on surface level, take it on face value, pure storytelling, and it's still just as effective. It's funny, isn't it? Because he was the master of suspense, but do you know in real life what his actual phobia was? No, what? Eggs. Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Cinema Cartography. In 2020, we're focused on bringing new and improved content for you weekly here on YouTube. The Cinema Cartography is also now producing exclusive and in-depth long format film content for our Patreon community. Our aim is to create a strong community of film enthusiasts there, so make sure to check patreon.com slash cinemacartography. And if you join our community in February, your name will be credited in our Selected Essays book. The publication starts later this year, and there's a lot more to come for our community. We're excited about pushing the limits in this new chapter of the Cinema Cartography. We would also like to thank Mubi for sponsoring this video. Mubi is an online streaming service that works just like a cinema. All the content is curated, so it saves you from mindless scrolling. Mubi's also ahead, always bringing fresh out of festival and rare films for you. This month on Mubi, you can check Yuzo Kawashima's post-war Japan films. Kawashima is surprisingly unknown outside of Japan, so his films are really hard to find, and Mubi is streaming the recently restored versions of gems like Our Town, Suzaki Paradise, and much more. So if you're interested, go to movie.com slash cinemacartography for your extended free trial.